What's up my friends, I am back at you again with another video. In this video we'll be taking a look at the out of summer DNA results of a Fontavagara tree, which is a female ancient North Eurasian from Siberia, from right here in Siberia. Essentially ancient North Eurasians are an upper Paleolithic cluster of individuals who are ancestral to a whole lot of people, ancestral to a whole cluster of populations in Europe, in, uh, in the Americas, in the Middle East, in uh, South Central Asia, in India. They are ancestral to pretty much everybody in Eurasia in the, and in the Americas. Uh, so what's interesting about this sample? Let's go ahead and explore it. Her mitochondrial lineage is R1B. I was uh, very surprised that uh, such a lineage exists. It, it's, it's very confusing because there is also a paternal lineage also called R1B. But she is a female. She does not have a paternal lineage. And she lived 16k to 15k years before the common era, which means 18k to 16k years before present, a long time ago. This is definitely the Upper Paleolithic period. This is kind of like the end of the Upper Paleolithic period. So she did not coexist with Neanderthals or anything like that. By the time she lived, the Neanderthals were already uh, pretty much extinct. But um, let's go ahead and explore what she scores with uh, G25. With G25, she essentially is closest to various um, peoples of Eastern Europe and Central, Central and South Asia. So she is closest to Udmurts, uh, Tlingit, which are Native Americans, also Pamiri, which are, uh, which are in Central Asia, and various South Asian groups, such as Jats and Roars and... Um, and uh, Jats from Uttar Pradesh, which I think uh, Uttar Pradesh is, is central India, but Jats are kind of like Jats are kind of like these outlier, very high uh, Aryan or step step admixture people in uh, in India. They are definitely very different from the rest of Indians. They are more like higher higher step or higher Aryan admixture. So. This Afontavagara tree individual is very similar to these Jat people, essentially. <laughs> what she scores with Eurogenesk 36, you can see that this is what she scores with Eurogenesk 36. She's essentially only scoring three components. <clears throat> She's scoring 46.27% 46 Amerindian component. Uh, this is the largest component. She's scoring 46% American Indian, Native American. So essentially, half, one half Native American. Then w roughly one half Volga Ural, uh, forty-four percent Volga Ural, kind of like a Mari or Tatar comp or like Bashkir component, uh, and four point six percent South Asian. So there is also like a South Asian component that she scores as well. Definitely very interesting. I think that she is more South Asian than than these oracles show because let me show you what she scores with Harappa World. Hold on, let's let's run her through Harappa World. Uh, and let's go ahead and see what she scores with the Oracle for G25. Hold on. Let's, okay, so the Harappa World Oracle is done, right? So for G, for Harappa World, she's scoring 42.5% Northeast European, 24% Baloch, right? So look at that, 24% Baloch and 22.7% Amer American with Harappa World, right? So she's scoring 24% Baloch. That's one quarter Baloch and one quarter Native American. So she does have this southern af affinity. She does have this southern, or like this, like Mediterranean, or like this, essentially this uh, West Asian-like affinity, and it is present in her as an ancient North Eurasian. That's a very interesting dynamic that you will observe with ancient North Eurasians. It is this presence of a southern, southern-like affinity. Because if if this southern affinity wasn't present, she wouldn't be scoring one quarter Baloch. And with um, G25, she's scoring 32% Latvian, 22.6% Roar, 20% Karitiana, which is a Native American, 19% Hanti, 5% Udmurt, 1.4% Finishes. Once again, 22% Roar. If you, did, if, if you don't have a southern affinity, you wouldn't be scoring 22% Roar. So once again, there is clear, clearly there is some kind of a southern uh, affinity, southern admixture, that ex southern something, some kind of southern shift, some kind of Mediterranean-like shift that exists in this individual, that exists in this cluster of people, uh, that can explain these kinds of results. Let's go ahead and see what she scores for my own, my own ethnicity calculator.
Um, so of course this this ethnicity calculator falls short of everything I've shown you previously because the S and P count is very different. So the S and P count for my own ethnicity calculator here is 146. Let's compare that with, um, for example, um, Harappa World. So for the Harappa World, you can see S and P used is 42k. For my own ethnicity calculator, S and P count is 146. Very stark contrast. So the closest population here is, of course, itself. Followed by that is Bo Botai Hunter Gatherer. Let me close this actually. Followed by that is Botai Hunter Gatherer from Kazakhstan. Followed by that is Malta Boy, also in ancient North Eurasian. Followed by that is Karakaba Turkic. Followed by that is another Turkic individual. Followed by that is Kipchak Turkic. Followed by that is Kazakh, one individual. Followed by that is Balshoy Aleni Ostrov, which is a sort of like a Uralic person from uh, Finland. Followed by that is Punjabi Jat. Followed by that is Livonian from Estonia, medieval individual. And for the models, Afontova Gara 3 plus Afontova Gara 3, Afontova Gara 3 plus Botai Hunter Gathered from Kazakhstan, second closest mixture. Afontova Gara plus Malta Boy, Afontova Gara plus Turkic. So these are the closest models for this individual. Uh, looks pretty okay. Looks okay. All right. Let's see the Nasha code calculators. Let's see what uh, coloring this individual scores. So it looks like she's got darkest brown eyes that for sure got really dark eye color. Uh, definitely very dark eye color. 72% likelihood of darkest brown eyes. Uh, it looks like she's got black hair. Definitely very dark uh, hair color as well. No likelihood of any hair color besides black, pretty much. For uh, skin color, it looks like she's got light brown skin. Uh, she could have dark brown skin as well, but most likely she's got light brown skin. Uh, likelihood of white skin or palest skin essentially is nothing. And it looks like she's got wavy, curly, or straight hair. Likelihood of kinky hair is very little. But it's kind of difficult to determine because it's not a very high quality file. And by the way, you know it's not a very high quality file by the SNP count. Because like if you have a high quality file, you will typically have an SNP count above, above 500. And here you have an SNP count that's 146. Right, so let's see what, what we got for the SNPs. Uh, does not have BH3, no BH2, no BH1. Okay. I was reading somewhere. I remember that this sample supposedly has two light color variants in this variation of Keto G. But um, the file I have for it does not have any genotypes here. Um, perhaps the version that was updated on European Nucleotide Archive that I have access to just doesn't have this data. But I can tell you that even if it did have this data, it would not change anything. The result would still be the same. So, like, um, whether this data would be there or if it wouldn't, like, that really would not change the result. So, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, and um, no ginger variants in MC1R. Okay, good stuff. I'm, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't change the result at all. It's just, like, really insignificant. Like, it wouldn't. Even even if even if she did have two light color variants here, the change would be really small. It wouldn't it wouldn't really impact the results in a very significant way. Uh, let's see the phenotype oracle, and the closest phenotypes to her, as you can see, is this followed by this, followed by this. Beautiful. The faces of ancient North Eurasians, but keep in mind that. Uh, if you have a low quality file, then the phenotype oracle, the phenotype oracle, will be not as uh, precise. So for the two-way oracles, you can see she's mostly getting modeled as a mixture of half like this phenotype plus half something from from the bottom row, like half from the top row plus half from the bottom row. Um, essentially, half this plus half that plus. Or half this plus half that, or half this plus half that. Yeah, so like half, essentially half dark colored European plus half um, Indian. Yeah, I can see that. I can totally imagine a a font of a Gera tree looking something like that. I guess sure. All right, let's see biomarkers. <coughs> For the biomarkers, looks like she's got above average levels of vitamin D. All right. 
below average levels of LDL cholesterol, below average levels of HDL cholesterol, pretty good. Um, above average levels of glucose, all right. Um, below average hemoglobin, really good to see. Uh, average blood pressure, really good to see. Nothing relevant was found for iron in blood. Uh, below average SHBG, really good to see. Below average level of red blood cell, all right, whatever. It's okay. Uh, let's see the polygenic risk scores right now. And nothing relevant was found for leukemia. Uh, above average for vitiligo, all right. Above average for myopia. Above average for primary biliary cirrhosis. Nothing relevant was found for stroke. Very low score for male parent hair loss. That's really good. So she's actually protected from male parent hair loss, which um, is good for her male relatives or like her son. Um, no, okay. Um, below average odds for atrial fibrillation. No um, genotypes for deep vein thrombosis. Below average, actually average odds for bipolar type 1, average odds for schizophrenia, average odds for type 2 diabetes, average odds for Alzheimer's, average odds for multiple sclerosis, um, nothing relevant for breast cancer, not, okay, for testicular cancer, nothing really was found, I guess, um, okay, pretty, pretty good for celiac disease, uh, I guess uh, no risk variance for GSS, um, pretty good for Crohn's. Nothing relevant for Reifenstein's and nothing relevant for Parkinson's. So there's nothing much to talk about. It's just not a very high quality file. Um, I can't really talk about any any of the stuff here. There is not any content. The only thing that's really good is that there is very low odds for male pattern hair loss. So the male pattern hair loss result is really good. Very low odds for that. It looks like she's got a predisposition to higher number of D2 dopamine receptors. That's really good. Um, Okay, and she also has this genotype, which leads to a robustly increased risk of suicidal behavior and depression, which is very interesting. Okay, and I should make, you know what, I, I just got this idea to make a, um, a panel like this for D2 dop dopamine receptors, but, j but for HTR2A, that, that would be a pretty good idea. I think I should do that, actually. Yeah, I think I should. For autism, she's got increased odds of autism, which is also pretty cool, pretty interesting. For empathy, looks like just predisposition to intermediate um, empathy. No European lactose persistence mutation. All right, so not predisposed to being lactose persistent. Um, okay, for let's see. No East Asian EZAR, European genotype in EZAR. Intermediate odds of protruding nasal bridge. Okay, better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Um, she's got AA in aspiration, so she's an Asian flusher, and she's got higher odds of alcoholism and esophageal cancer. This is actually one of the East Asian facial traits, one of the East Asian genetic traits that she has. Definitely very interesting. So she actually even has some East Asian genetic traits that are present in her gen genome. Definitely very cool. She's not a carrier of cutaneous albinism type 1b mutation, not albino. Definitely very, very interesting. Um, she's got two risk variants for leprosy. Okay. Uh, she's got this genotype which protects her from going bold. So that's that's very, very cool. And it's also X-linked, which means her uh, her son will inherit it from her. So which means her son will not go bold. Really, really cool. She's got two protective variants from HIV, which leads to a 90% reduction in HIV viral load, which means she is, uh, I mean, she's got a lot of really good genotypes, really healthy, really healthy individual. Uh, H H HLA gene panel, it looks like she's got lower odds of autoimmune disease, really good, really good stuff as well. Uh, for color blindness panel, looks like she's got, nothing relevant was found for FTO gene panel. Um, Nothing relevant was found. Bio trace panel. Looks like she's got two copies of the farmer CLTCL1 gene variant. Essentially, this gene variant has to do with how you process carbohydrates and fats uh, and sugars. And people with the farmer gene variant tend to process them better. So she has an uh, advantage in processing carbohydrate-rich diets. And that's why she's a farmer. So it's ironic that she, as a hunter-gatherer in her lifestyle, has the farmer gene variant. Okay. Um. She is more able to detect uh, beta ionine floral fragrance. <coughs> 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 
Okay. And for blood group panel, she most likely has blood type A. But blood type O is also quite possible. So I guess it's most likely blood type O or A. But blood type A is just slightly, ever so slightly more possible than type O. Type O is 39%. Type A is 57%. Well, that's pretty much all there is for um, Afonto Vagara 3. That's all I wanted to show you in this video. Thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching until the end. Um, I'm not going to say that the file is in the description because it's already on my drive. I made uh, the initial video like five months ago. So, you know, I guess just find the initial video and the file will be there. Uh, but thanks for watching. Goodbye.